Good morning, beautiful people of Instagram. This is Jose Trujillo, once again, coming to you from the art studio I just got here. And uh, again, Starbucks water. The hell's wrong? The hell's, what the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. I got my coffee ready. So I hope that you guys are having a great morning. I thought you guys are getting started with a uh, uh, positive attitude. How's it going, guys? Thanks so much for, for joining in. Good morning. People of uh, Instagram, people that are working, you hardworking folks out there. There's a lot of artists who are, are, are working very hard and... Still feel like things are not happening for them, right? I know because I've been there. Uh, so, my, my, my thought about this is, why is it that many times we're in a place where we're working hard, we start out in a very high upbeat, right? A high upbeat uh, momentum. And then we get sort of discouraged or whatever, right? We, we get uh, our hopes not necessarily up anymore. How's it going, Shanaz? Good to see you. You know what? I need to get, I need to let this little dog out because he's going to start like crying. So just a second, guys. Bear with me. Because otherwise he's going to start like just crying. Okay. No, Sonic. No, how not, Sonic? <laughs> I'd rather have them playing around there. Sorry about that, guys. How's it going, Walker? So again, guys, why is it that sometimes we feel like, like uh, we are, we have this this high um, momentum? You know, we have this high momentum. We feel energized and we are optimistic. And, and all of a sudden something, you know, for whatever reason, right? We feel a bit discouraged and whatnot. So that's what I'm talking about this morning. This is hammer time. According to according to Megan, <laughs> it's hammer time. <laughs> so oh man, this coffee tastes this coffee tastes good. Super burnt. Ah, it's like a shot of tequila. <laughs> so, I believe that the only there, there's many. There could be many reasons why that happens to artists, but I think that there's one specific one that just kind of blankets all of them. And I believe the reason is because we have a a tendency to find out what the perfect moment is. We have a tendency to do that. As human beings, as artists, we have a tendency to find out what the perfect moment. So if we have a, a task we want to do, like for example, today, this morning, you may have your goals, as I've talked about it in, in other videos. You have your goals on your to-do list, your action plan for today, right? And and you may be looking for, for, for the right time. Like you'll, you'll put, you know, 10 things you need to do today, right? Or five things or whatever. Or if you're starting out and building that muscle, you have three things to do. It doesn't matter. It's still, you may be uh, you may be lost into trying to find out what the right time is for those things, and and this is something that that it almost I think it afflicts most people in different ways, right? In different places, in different situations. In different aspects of their life, but it, it afflicts people because we we tend to think that there's going to be this right moment. Like uh, uh, here's a little here's a my wife is not here, so I can so I can say this. <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch it later. So I I I got a a cleaning service for 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 my home, right? And and my wife was telling me this is all mechanisms that that we still you know try to to go beyond 
But she tells me this morning, oh, I got to I gotta make sure to uh, pick up before the cleaning service comes, you know. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> She's like, no, yeah, I got to make sure to pick up because I'm like, uh, no, you know, that's what the cleaning service is for. They're going to do that. And if they don't do that, then we, you know, they are an agreement so that they can do that. And, you know, maybe we pay a bit extra or whatever. But, but that's what they do. It, so it reminded me of also things that I do. For example, uh, certain things that I do <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Like, I gotta, I gotta, it's, it's adding work, right? It's adding work. It's adding process, adding process to, to, to a task. Like, like I, like I mentioned before, uh, it's like looking at weights and saying, when I get the strength, I'm going to come and lift those weights, you know? And it's like, ah, oh, no, dude, that's, that's, that's actually, it's the other way around. That's how you get the strength, you know, by lifting those weights or, or not necessarily that amount of weights, but by lifting, you know, that's how you get the strength. So I know that I do that uh, quite a bit with different stuff. Shana says, uh, I can understand why she wants to clean up first. LOL. <laughs> uh, totally. <laughs> but this is something very, very normal. No, there's, there's certain mechanisms. Like, for example, one of the things that I, that I, that I do is I used to do. I don't do it anymore. I don't do it anymore, but I used to do it. I used to clean my car before I took it to the, to the, to the people who cleaned and washed the car. Because, you know, the people that wash the car, you can you can ask them to clean and throw stuff away or whatever. You know, like, I, it's it's just a matter of asking, right? If you don't ask, they're not going to do it. They're not going to touch anything. But uh, certain places, if you just ask, look, everything that you see here, it needs to be cleaned up and thrown away and blah, blah. And it's just a matter of asking, right? But I used to go and clean and, and try to make it look clean and, and have it clean before I took it to the people who were actually going to wash it and clean it. And then I, at some point I was like, well, this is stupid. <laughs> you know? it, it's adding process. It's adding process. Now, those are very little things, right? And, and, and there is logic to them. I'm sure that there's logic to them. I'm sure people, people can be like, oh, I get it. You know, there's, there's logic to this. There absolutely is logic to it. You can always find logic to adding process. For example, uh, I told someone if they could help me uh, write articles, right? Like, change my my um, YouTube videos and translate them, right? Not barbatim, but translate them into articles. If they could help me do that. Uh, and, and I found myself, right, writing the article. This is, this, is, this is how crazy this is. I found myself writing the article and the person basically just proofread the article. And I was like, well, this is stupid, right? Because, <laughs> because... <laughs> Like I need someone, I need to delegate this to someone, not add to the process, right? Not add to the process. It's, it's the idea of control. It's really what it is. I need to control because, because I need, I need to be looked a certain way. I need to be, I need to feel a certain way. I don't want people to think I'm, I'm stupid. I don't want people to think I'm dirty. I don't want people to think on and on and on and on. So it's adding process, right? Again, this is a, these are very, uh, it's it's small things, right? But they but they do happen in your own career, and they happen in your in in your work as you're doing this. Uh, another thing that happens is, is 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 little stuff, right? It's I have to clean my table where I paint, right? My 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 glass table. It has to be very clean. This doesn't happen anymore, but it used to happen, and it used to bother me so much because I couldn't paint. I couldn't paint, or I couldn't mix paint unless it was spotless, right? And to uh, until I came to a certain point where I was like, "This is stupid." It's like it's like overworking to get to work. It's like so much pre work. Like as I was with a, with another uh, spatula trying to clean everything out. And, and and trying to make it perfect so that I could start. I used to do that with my brushes too. Until my brush was spotless clean, I wouldn't re-dip it, like dip it again on oil. It had to be clean. I had to like make sure and then I would brush it and brush it. This happened to me when I started painting. 
They have to be very clean. So now these are processes, right? And why am I talking about this little stuff that, you know, most people are like, well, you know, that's okay. It's perfectly understandable because it translates. Because it's, it's, it's as, as, as uh, my friend Esteban said once uh, here in one of our live videos, how you do one thing, you do everything. Right? How you do one? I think that's what he said. What? How you do one? How you? How you do anything? How you do anything? You do everything. So it translates. If you're a person that takes your time for the little stuff, you'll take your time for the big stuff. So that's why. That's why so many artists we we go through our our careers or, or learning how to do things, and we still don't get it. Like what's happening? Why is it? Why is it? Why does it feel much difficult? Much more difficult than it should be. It's because maybe if you look back, if you trace paces back. You are applying. Uh, you're you're applying uh, habits that on your on your little stuff, right? On the daily stuff, you're applying them in your career. So if you hesitate to do something on a little thing, you're going to hesitate uh, putting in the time on learning how to make a you know a figurative painting, or you're going to hesitate. To go in and pull the trigger on something, right? Because you hesitate on the little stuff. So this is why I believe many of us have a very uh, skewed sense of self. And and what I mean by this is is not sense of self necessarily, but but sense of of where we are a, a professionally. So I used to think I was very professional. I was like, yeah, 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 because because you know I've I've always been about about you know, small business and trying to get something rolling and, and working for myself and hard work and blah, blah, blah. And so I had this idea of my almost over inflated idea of myself that I could work hard and I could be fast and I could get things done and on and on and on. And, and, and this, 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 how I carry myself. Right. So every time, but I kept hitting this wall that I had no idea where it was. It was almost invisible. I was like, what the hell is this? And once I started digging in, I started realizing, oh man, I just have an overinflated idea of myself, right? Which, there's nothing wrong, <laughs> but it's good to recognize, right? It's good to recognize. I think you, you, you can have a very high self-esteem and think, yeah. You know, I remember talking to artists and, 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 and lots of artist friends saying, oh yeah, man, you know, I can make it happen. Let's do it, blah, blah, blah. And then half the project, right? Not even half, a quarter into the project, maybe sometimes like a few steps into the project, boom, everything crumbles, right? Because there wasn't that muscle. So there was this huge idea, right? Uh, one of my mentors says, uh, it's a, uh, it's a miss, uh, what, what does he call it? It's an underestimation. You underestimate how much it takes and how much of you it will take. It will take. So so you pump the rest up with ideas only, right? With an idea of yourself, right? But you underestimate. For example, as I mentioned, if you wanted to 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 land a gallery, you gotta talk to at least a hundred galleries, right? And you'll you'll for sure land one. You know, even if if, <laughs> if you're persistent and consistent, you are going to land one, right? A gallery show. So so it, we underestimate what it takes, right? We underestimate what what uh, what it actually takes. So we we fill the rest of it with an idea or perception only. Like, yeah, I can do it because because we don't know. See, we don't we 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 haven't been in that place. We it's uncontested. It's 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 a, it's a different water. It's a different field. So so we just imagine, yeah, 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 we can do it. But once we show up, we're like, oh man, like I completely underestimated what it's gonna take. Now, why am I saying all of this stuff? I'm gonna step, I'm gonna take some steps back. Because many times when we are going after something, like, you know, this is it's 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 morning for most of us. It's uh for most of us in the US, anyways. Uh <laughs> most of us in the US, anyways. Uh and we're ready to go and tackle our lives and we're ready to go and, and, and go into our, our work or whatever, you know. And and I wanted to remind you guys, look, there is no Sonic. There is no such thing as the right timing. The right timing. We tend to underestimate how much it's going to take and how fast you have to move. And by fast, it doesn't mean necessarily moving 
uh, in a task fast. Now that's important, right? Picking up the phone, doing it, going into the studio and not overthinking it. Yes. But what I've come to understand that is much more important is to actually pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. Like when you're, when you have something you thought about, like, oh man, I have to call that gallery. Like, don't sit on it. Don't, don't become fast somewhere else and not become fast in your decisions. There you go. I finally got to it. Become fast in your decisions. That's really what I wanted to get to. Man, I talk a lot to get to a point. Hmm. <laughs> Speaking of that. <laughs> Make sure that your decisions are like light speed. Don't overthink them. Especially the ones that are not, are not, most decisions are not life threatening. They're not life, they're not going to alter your life. You know, it's not going to be night and day. It's, 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 it's but a, it's but nothing in the cosmos and the greater things. Stevonik says, uh, I think your superpower from my perspective is that you don't fear being judged. You execute and let someone else decide how good it is uh, later. Totally. Uh, which ends up improving your quality and skill. Dude, I love that. That's so true. I, I think, yeah, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't willing to, to, to do this. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, says Stebonix just, just pointed something out that I think is really cool. I wasn't willing to do this. I think I was always like afraid, like everyone else, you know, I was like, man, I don't know. I, I don't sound eloquent. I don't, you know, I don't sound, I don't look, you know. I'll get onto YouTube when I lose 50 pounds. <laughs> Stupid shit like that, you know? <laughs> or or when I get the studio right, you know? That, because I don't... my, my, my where, where I paint, it's not very big. It's a room. But the, the, whole, the whole house is a studio, right? But where I... The specific place where I paint is small. And, and I always... Because when I was younger, I used to have bit larger studios. And... And so, you know, well, what if they don't like that? What if they don't like it? Fuck that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I used to think like, oh, man, like it needs to look good. Right. So the people believe me and it's and it's believable and it's true. And it's, you know, it looks more real and, and on and on and on. And I remember uh, hearing Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, uh, the, the, the yeah, you guys know, everybody knows who Warren Buffett is, the trader. Uh not not trade tour trader <laughs> trader <laughs> uh he said he said uh in order to reach any success in any field i think something like that you got to you got to challenge the status quo and when i thought of the status quo i thought not only the status quo outside because many of us go right to the status quo outside i thought of well i got to change my status quo Right, not just the one outside, because the one. Sure, I can go and try to change the status quo outside. Be like, I'm gonna do things differently. Yeah, but how about I do things differently here first, right? Because I'm used to trying to get everything perfect. And what what if I remove this and just, you know, just pull the trigger, and 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 you know, just don't mind, you know, or mind less. I still mind, you know, but mind less, mind my mind much less. Uh, and and he said, make a fool, make a fool of yourself. I remember, I remember seeing that is a little clip on a on a video. He says, challenge the status quo. I don't know how you're gonna do that. Make a fool of yourself. Don't be afraid. And I was like, oh man, that's that's exactly it, right? That's exactly it. And I don't know how that's going to look like, but every time I'm gonna do something, I'm going to challenge the status quo, and I'm gonna start by challenging my status quo. My status quo is, I think, the most important first. To challenge because if you're used to doing things a certain way, you you you're like I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna wait. Here's a here's a thing I used to tell my wife all the time. Okay, it, it, when we we're gonna do projects, right? We're gonna buy something or we need to get furniture or whatever. I used to say this. Hold on, let me let me uh, let me see what I'm gonna need because everything's a process. I used to tell her this. Everything's a process. Let me go check it out first. And she'd be like, oh, okay, oh, my God, okay, <laughs> you know? But I grew up looking at everything as a process because my surrounding, my 
my family members, you know, I, I hope you guys are not listening. Uh, many of them thought like this, right? And and it was it was a. Uh, uh, it's just bad data, bad information, right? It's, it wasn't that they're bad or lazy or anything like that. I don't think so. I think it's just bad information. It's passed down, generational, right? It's just bad fucking information. That's all it is. And if we could just move ourselves from that bad information. Because I remember my dad doing stuff and being like, oh, yeah, I got to go to the Home, Dep Home Depot like five times. And I remember as a kid being like, well, not a kid, but, you know, my teenager being like, what the hell's wrong? You know, what the hell's wrong with my old man? Why does he have to go to the Home Depot five times to do like a little project, right? And I get it that he enjoyed the project. He enjoyed the process. That's that's what was fun, right? But it is not pragmatic. Because if you just stay in that fun, right, you can't move to the next thing. Now, there's moments for that, certainly. You know, some people just, you know, they're, I don't know, they're lawyers and they're like, I'm going to, I have a friend who's a lawyer, right? And he's like, I'm going to make a bench, Right? <laughs> I'm going to make a bench, a wooden bench. And then, you know, you spend a few hours with some beers making a wooden bench. But that's for fun, you know, shits and giggles. He's not going to do that in his in his law firm, right? He's not going to go in and be like, oh, well, you know, for shits and giggles. Like, no, because then he's going to miss on the opportunity, right? He has to move in fast and, and, and take care of, of, you know, his business fast. That, that's what he does. But, but I saw my dad doing stuff like, like, you know, we're going to put that door there. And my dad being like, it's a process, you know. Here's first we're going to do this. And I just, I'm like milking the process, enjoying the process. While in reality, uh, we should have taken care of that door and then moved to the next, uh, you know, crooked fence, <laughs> right? And fix that. And then, you know, actually make make progress, right? Make progress. So, so I grew up looking at those things. I grew up looking at my, my siblings, uh, especially my, my, my older brothers, looking at my brothers, behaving in a way like my dad as well. You know, oh, we're going to do this. Oh, okay, we got to go to the store and we got to do this and we got to measure and we took a little, you know, and it was like this process and I was like, oh my God, can we just press the button? You know, <laughs> but then I bought into it as well. I bought into it. So when I first got married, I saw everything as a process. Like, oh yeah, we're going to open a, a boutique. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's a process. Let's see here. Let's go take care of this first. Let's go. Or or I would think of myself as being very fast and very, very hard work here, a uh, very hard working person, but also not having the ability to make decisions quickly. So once I made a decision, I was like, yeah, and I went balls to the wall, right? But to make the decision, it would take months. Sometimes even years, you know, just to make the decision. I mean, I, I, I still have a problem with making decisions, right? I still, I still, I know I need to make, do certain things. And I thought about them like five years ago, right? And I'm like, oh man, but I'm getting better at it because, because I'm shining light on it. I'm shining light on it. You know, it's like what I call the personal audit, shining light on it. So what I discovered is in, in my personal life is, look, there is, baggage that we come with right due to family society you know social norms and on and on and on but what i what i found out the most important thing is not necessarily just working faster working harder being the hardest working person in the room yes all of those things are given they should happen they're they are like the like if you don't do that i don't know you know it's just not gonna it's probably not gonna work for you i think but aside from that right the single most important thing, I believe, is to be able to make decisions like that. Like, take decisions like that. That is the, the it's like the, it's a game changer. Because it challenges your status quo, you know. It challenges your your your, your paradigm. Like, if you're like, I'm going to make YouTube videos. And, and, and then you're like, yeah. And then you go to sleep and you're like, yeah, I'm going to make YouTube videos. And you wake up and you're like, yeah, I'm going to make YouTube videos. And then another good day goes by and you're like, yeah, you know. And on and on and on and on. It's, it's. It's not, people call it procrastination and this and that. And, and it, yeah, it's all of that. But it's, it's really that we were not trained. It's very few people. It's a very small group of people in the world that are trained uh, to, to pull the trigger. As soon as you think something, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do that now. Boom. You know, and then you just get it going. You don't, you don't necessarily finish it. It's not complete, but you get it started, right? 
And then the next day, boom, you touch it again. And then the next day, you touch it again, right? Even if it's for 10, 15 minutes, you touch it every day, right? And then there's days that you can touch it for, you know, two hours or whatever, you know, work on it is what I mean by touching it, right? You go, it's a touch tone. You're like, oh, yeah, YouTube videos, boom, today again, work on it for a little bit, right? you know, because there's other things in life, right? It's not just doing YouTube videos, it's your work, it's your family, it's this and that, but at least you go and you, you pull the trigger. The reason why I believe that we don't pull the triggers, I don't think necessarily that it's, that it's uh, although some people have a problem with procrastination, but I really don't think it's just procrastination. I don't think it's... I don't think it's, uh, and people say it's fear, it's fear, but it's, but we can't touch it. We don't know what it is, right? It's almost like a phantom. What is it? I personally believe, I personally believe that it's the fear of the unknown, right? It's unknown. It, we don't know it. It's like the caveman in the, in the cave, right? Like, 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 I don't know what's out there. So I'm going to stay in the cave. I don't know what's out there. So it's there, there's this fear of the unknown and and in that fear of the unknown, right, if we just open it up a little bit more and we look inside, I think that we believe that it's not the right time. We believe it's not the right time. Because as human beings, I, I feel like we are conditioned to do things when things are comfortable. Like, we'll sail when the waters are calm, you know? Like, yeah, that's the right time. When the when the sky, ha the sky has, you know, uh, opened... And the, and the water is calm, and the boats are perfect, and the people are well fed, and everything's ready, that's when we'll sail. And it's the right time of the year, and it's the right time of the day. And I'm learning to do like, no, you know, fuck that. I'm getting on that raft. I don't care if the boat's not ready. I'll die in the process. It's fine. But I'm sailing now, right? I'm going it, to... It's almost like a... a because you, you're not going to die. Like, you're, you know, it's, it's not like... It's not like we're making life... Life and death decisions. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just pulling the trigger to the things that you want most. Like, I'm like, man, I got to get a personal trainer, right? Because this shit of me trying to show up to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the gym, it's not working, right? I do it some days and I don't do it. And I finally figured it out. You know, I asked one of my mentors. I was like, what's wrong? He's like, dude, it's because you don't have the habit. You don't see yourself as someone who trains. You don't have the habit. He's like... Find the straight line. He's always telling me, find the straight line. What is it? Go find someone who already has the habit built in, right? And pay them to show up so that you can show up. They're going to show up for the money and you're going to show up for that person, right? But they already built the habit, right? They may be horribly procrastinators on other areas of their life, but they are not procrastinators in, in the habit of going for a two mile run a day, you know, or waking up early in the morning to go exercise or whatever. They have that habit. So, so I was like, oh man, that's what I'm going to do. So I pulled the trigger, right? I walked into the nearest place. I was downtown. I was ready to go have breakfast. And I was like, you, <laughs> I, I saw Jim right there. I was like, you, who does personal training here? I'm like you, I don't know. I don't know. It might be expensive. I don't know, but I want to build a habit. You know, it's not a long life thing. Like I, I know but if I build a habit, right, then I'll start doing it myself, right? But I need to build a habit. I don't know how many months or years that's going to take me. I hope not years, but I hope it takes me, you know, a few months to build that habit. So, so I have to build the triggers. It's important to me, right? If, if the healthier I am, the more fit I am, I'm going to feel more confident. Uh, I'm going to feel faster. I'm going to feel stronger, right? I'm going to have more, more life juice, more oxygen in my brain, and on and on and on. And I've been struggling with it, right? Because I've been trying to show up to the gym on my own. And I'm like, dude, this, this ain't working. Because I don't see myself as a as a gymnasium type of person, right? Because you have to see yourself as that. Like, for example, if I don't paint, it's like, what the hell's wrong with me? Because I see myself as a painter. Shana says, that's me. Uh, so many ideas, but little action. Because I'm holding myself back over thinking and being a perfectionist. Totally. Totally. That's the problem that we see ourselves as having so many ideas. Now, as, as, as a good man out there named Gary Vaynerchuk says, ideas are ish. Like I, I, ideas, that's why I tell people, look, get your ideas, write them, and then toss them. Okay? Write them and toss them. Don't look at them. Don't, don't. Ideas are like the procrastinator's tool. Right. 
If if you want to be suspended, right, nailed nailed on the wall, just get yourself a book of ideas and start writing ideas, and you'll 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 essentially nail yourself to a wall. Because that's what ideas do. Ideas keep this uh, motivated and excited, and and you're like, yeah, and then yeah, and then I'm gonna, you know, I always know because I I used to bring people to help me in the studio, and and some people were like, were were a bit younger than me, just to buy a few years. Uh, some of the, the U of A kids. No? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, some university students. And, and I could always see it, that, that they were full of, of ideas. You know, they were like excited. And yeah, and this and that. And I could, I could see, right? Because I, I could sense that I was the same way when I was their age. And I could sense that, oh man, like I have to learn how to pull the trigger, right? Because, because they're doing the same thing that I used to do. And I spent years having ideas. I spent years, and it's you. You you essentially nail yourself to 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 uh, to a wall uh, with with ideas. And we think that we have these ideas, right? Because because uh, the 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 mind is an interesting thing. You either use it or you get used by it. It's it's that it's that cut and dry. You either use it. It's a tool. It's a double edged sword. You either you either slice. You know. You either slice with it. Or it'll slice you, and it'll keep you, you know, dead there. You're just hopeful, right? And and till uh, till til you're not, right? Till enough time has gone by that you're like, oh man, what have I done? I just been, you know, thinking about things I want to do, not doing them because I want because I want to get to the right moment. It's the right moment. The right moment is right now, and it's so. It's so difficult to see it because it doesn't look, it, do, it doesn't present itself as right. That is the tragedy of the human being, I think, <laughs> in life. <laughs> that is the I'm being all existentialist here, but that is a tragedy. That life itself, the way it is right now, is as perfect as it can be, as it can ever be. But it's not presented, right? The, the brain, because the brain is always trying to make sense of things the brain doesn't doesn't can't because it's not for the brain right that's why the the great jc uh, jesus christ <laughs> uh uh talked about it the, the 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 secrets right are going to be kept away from the from 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 the wise or intelligent people right and it's going to be given to the meek because the intelligent person can't conceive it right that's the brain it can't conceive it it can't put it together it's 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 not right. It's not right. right. You 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 you're in front of a situation, and the very first thing we do is not right. It's not right. It's it's it doesn't fit. Right. It doesn't fit. It it doesn't. It it, it and, and some people have this in acute, very very you know uh, forms, very high forms of of uh, anxiety or you know and on and on and I know because I I suffer through that. It, because it, it doesn't fit, you know. I remember being a kid and, and and having to to touch things twice, three times, just because I needed to repeat the action. Right? This is very weird stuff, but but it came from that idea of things that are in front of me are not presented. When I saw that movie by uh, what's his name, uh, Ben Affleck, the accountant, yeah, you know, I didn't have something that acute. But I remember having this, 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 uh, being annoyed for not, for things not fitting, for not, for, for not finishing things, not completing things when I was a child. You know, there was this, there was this, uh, a lot of anxiety around it and stress. And as I grew older, as I started growing up, I saw it manifesting in a very negative thinking pattern and I had to purge it out. I had to constantly purge it out. And one of the ways that I did that is, of course, through meditation. But another way is that I started, just uh just giving up and i'm not saying giving up on me or life giving up on the expectation right i surrendered to it i saw the expected like, you know my painting didn't come out right and i would flip my painting off and be like i love you just the way you are i don't care you know stupid stuff like that little triggers right little triggers that <laughs> i know that some people are like dude this guy's crazy but little triggers that help me open up myself to the possibility and not and not feel that that things had to fit a certain way and now i'm in a place in my life where i now i understand this in a deeper level 
in a deeper sense where I, where I see things that I want to do and I'm like, no, dude, it's happening now. It's not, I'm not waiting for it. I've, I've played that game too long already. You know, I, I want to, you know, I, I want to do this in my, in my, in my studio, in my art studio. It's happening now. Oh, I don't have time. I don't know where I'm going to fit it. I don't care. I don't care that I don't have time, right? That my mind says I don't have time. I don't care that I don't have the right materials. I don't care that, that I have to do another hundred things. It's happening now, like right now. As soon as I, I turn this thing off and I go to the next thing, it's happening now. It's not going to, it's not going to, see, because that's the game of life. The game of life, it's now. Every time that you're not now, that you're not doing things now or not doing whichever you, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you want, whether you want to do or just sit there, it's fine. It's either there's no there's no right or wrong. Right. But you got to be fully in. Right. You got to be fully in. You got to fully accept that you are going to engage or not. And, and the whole that's why I don't use schedules. That's why I, I can't stand schedules, because they lock you in to to pockets that are not realistic. Right? For 30 minutes, I'm going to go do this. It's not realistic because, because what if it only takes me five minutes? Or what if, or what, what if it doesn't take me 30 minutes? What if I need an hour, right? What if I absolutely need an hour for it? So I don't do that. I, I, I just do. I do and I move as fast as possible. But as I, again, guys, as I'm telling you right now, it's not just moving as fast as possible. It's making decisions as fast as possible. It's the decision that's going to set you free. The, the, the reason why things are not working for many artists out there is because your inability to make decisions. It is, it is that, that, again, I believe that that is one of the biggest tragedies in human existence. I think that there's a few tragedies. Uh, <laughs> because it's a mental thing, right? It's life doesn't appear the way. This moment is, doesn't appear, right? I can't conceive it to being perfect. You know, uh, were you married before you were married? Of course not. Did you have children before you had children? No. Did you have strength before you lifted weights? No, right? Did you have muscle, right? That muscle before you lifted weights? No. You have to go do it first. You have to make the decision first, right? You can't, you can't be married before you get married. You can't, you can't, you know, have artwork. I know it sounds, it sounds stupid, but just think about it for a little second. You know, you can't have it. You can't have it before you actually get it. Right? You have to go, you have to, you have to make the decision. And many times what we do is that we try to put the, the cart before the horse. And and we, we want things to appear a certain way and we want them to, to make sense to us, but they can't. It's very difficult. It's very difficult because the mind does not know how to understand. The mind has no concept of time. This is, this is uh, again, this is one of the, I think it's one of the biggest secrets that sages out there are trying to share with us. The mind, sages and wise men and, 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 and prophets that have walked the earth are trying to share with us constantly. The mind understands nothing. It's, it, it, it's, it has no understanding, not anything, not a single drop of understanding of time. The mind cannot conceive time that is the tragedy of the human being the mind cannot conceive cannot conceive time so the mind waits the mind processes the mind burns before it can conceive time it cannot it's not for that only your soul can conceive time only your spirit can conceive time right it can only come from your your, your inner core to conceive time that's why you have to trust it because the mind cannot do that the, the mind was not built for that. The mind is a tool. So why am I saying this? The, the, the mind thinks linear. Right? Past, present, and future. No, no present. Past and future. It's linear. Right? The mind does that. The mind looks at a project and says, when is the right time? Okay, well, when I figure this out, and then I figure this out, and then I figure this out. It, so the mind, the, mind is, the mind is meaningless to time. As it has it does not serve you in in only only the mind can only serve you in in organization it's an organization tool but the, the but time in its true existence the only time time exists is now 
This is what all sages out there are trying to tell us. This is what Jesus and everybody who has walked this earth that we consider uh, uh, God or, or, or a prophet or whatever, you know, this is what all these people have been trying to tell us over and over. But it's hard, right? Because we're trying to use the mind to understand it. The mind cannot conceive time. So in order to change your life, you cannot come from a mental point. You cannot come from a mental state. You have to come from a being state, from your being and, and in the being is when you go and attack life, right? You, it's, it's, I, I, it, you become more aggressive with life. And I'm not talking about aggression in, 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 in a negative form. I'm talking about you go in and you chug life. You start living life. It can only, it, you can only experience life through being. Because, because the mind only understands past and future. The mind, the mind has no... Recon, the mind can't even recognize this moment. The mind, it, it's impossible for the mind to recognize this moment. It, it will never be possible. And it's not its job. And that's what we're trying to do. It's like we're using... This is the tragedy of the human being, guys. It's like we're using a stick, right? To, to feel another person, right? You, you, you want to touch another person. You want to touch your, 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 your spouse or you know, your husband. You want to you wanna caress their cheek, right? It's like you're using a stick. To do it instead of using your hand you're using your mind to try to make sense of the world it's a tool you can't you can't use it the mind only understands past and future so that's why i say look your ability to make decisions cannot come from your mind it cannot it can never come from your mind that's that's why most people are like man shit's not working for me of course shit's not working for you because you're coming from your mind constantly you have to be able to come from the core you have to be able to come from the core. And I know it sounds abstract, but the only way to, 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 to make life better for yourself, I believe, the only way, and I know it sounds totalitarian because there's some stuff that I say very totalitarian, like a Sith Lord. <laughs> like Sith Lord. <laughs> it's to make decisions. And, and, and don't worry about collateral damage. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay if something breaks. It's okay if, if you hurt someone's feelings. It's okay if someone, if someone doesn't like it. It's okay if someone complains. It's all right. But make the decision. You know, life-changing moments are only, are only attached to decisions. Life-changing moments are only attached to decisions. Remember back in your life, every time you had a, a, a life, a life-changing moment. What was it? It was a decision. You said in the altar, I do. <laughs> you you uh you made a, a a decision whether it was conscious or unconscious i don't know but it was a decision right hopefully you're making a conscious decision but this doesn't mean that you're thinking right it means that you're calm right you make a decision you're calm you're like oh, okay i'm doing that what am i doing that now and you and you 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 dip into it now i'm doing it now you know i'll leave that for tuesday at 5 p.m you know most people, we're trying to mimic this type of professionals. We're trying to mimic uh, what I and other people call high, high performance people, right? There's a great book out there by Brendan Bouchard. He's like, Habits of High Performance People. <laughs> Brendan Bouchard is a cool guy. I like him. Uh, but that's what they're called, right? It's the very type A people that are go-getters. And, and, you know, they're your CEOs. They're your athletes. They're, you know, doers, right? Movers and shakers. So, <laughs> movers and shakers. <laughs> These people have been trained to make decisions, right? They've been trained to make decisions. They're, they're not emotionally... They, they, don't, they don't make decisions based on emotion. They make decisions based on... They're, they're, they're pragmatic. So, they're trained to pull the trigger. Right, they're, they're they're they don't sit on stuff. Most of the the, the big CEOs and the, you know the, the the Rolling Stones, the whatever you know. Look at think of any band that's out there, any group, any artist, any music uh, artist or anything. You know, they're like you're gonna play at the Madison, you know, blah blah blah, or you're gonna play at this shitty bar because we're going to, you know, whatever. Uh, no, think of someone big, right? Think of, I don't know, the Rolling Stones. You're going to play at the blah, blah, blah. You know, Madison Square Garden or whatever. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, sure, whatever. How are you saying in, 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 in British accent? Yeah, right? Uh, 
They don't think about it. You know why? Because when they were told, you're going to play at the shitty bar down the street, they also said, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So, sure, you would do it for the, for, for a big place, right? You're like, oh, yeah, I would do it for a big place and for all the money they're getting paid. That's how they got the money. That's how they got the fame. Because they never said no to the little stuff. They never said no to the... A lot of people are like, man, I, I got to be careful so that I play my cards right. I got to play my cards right. These people didn't play their cards right. If you study the, 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 some of the lives of these people, uh, what's, this, what's this guy's... Uh, the Beatles. You know, the Beatles play at the shittiest bars. They, all they play was covers in the beginning. They, you know, they played a lot of cover, a, a lot of cover music. They played in the in the in the in the in the bars that were considered the, the lowest of the low, right? Why? Because they're hungry. They just want to they, they, see. In, for life to happen, I believe you have to say yes to it. You have to say yes. You have to say yes so much. I know there's there's confusion. There's thought out there for people that uh, a lot of people are saying you have to say no to life, right? You have to learn how to say no. You don't say yes enough to say no. You don't say yes enough. And I'm not talking about you have to say no because they're trying to they're, people are trying to tell you to come from a power point, from a power stand, right? Not get bullied and pushed around and not be a pushover. So you got to stay your ground and say, no, I'm not going to do this. Totally understand. Keep doing that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is experiencing life. Like, like, hey, we should go to the Grand Canyon. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be great. But, uh, you know, it's not the right time of the year. Blah, blah. Dude, go. Go to the Grand Canyon. You know, I don't know. Uh, someone invited me to... People are always inviting me to exhibits <laughs> in different places, right? You should come here. You should do that. You should do that. And I used to be like, oh, no, I'm too busy. You know, I can't do it right now because, you know, I'm a big shot. I'm selling my artwork online. and I'm so busy. And and till you know, till I started getting to a point where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Stupid. Say yes. And if you can't do it, once you get there, you know, then it's fine. Right? Break something. It's okay. Be like, well, you know what? Didn't work. Didn't work. I thought I was going to do it. Couldn't do it. But say yes in the beginning. What we were taught was, was if you're going to say yes, baby, be sure that you don't have another, you know, another commitment somewhere else and this and that. Dude, we're not talking about marriage. We're not talking about children. We're talking about just pulling triggers in life so that we can move forward and we can, we can start rolling in life and we can start enjoying and experiencing life. So make as many decisions as possible. Say yes or no. It doesn't matter. But most of us, I know that most, most human beings don't say yes enough. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. We don't say yes enough. Someone tells us, hey, let's do this. They're like, oh, no. No, I, I, I can't because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, and it's, it's, it's a huge mistake. You should, you should be saying yes a lot. Experience life. Experience. Because the more you say yes, the more, the more you start experiencing life. And it's only through experience that you actually live. You know, it's 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 in it's in 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 the way I believe that the way to live life is the way you came in, right? You actually came, you came out into life. You didn't came into the world. It looks that way. You came out into the world, but it was out. It was an exit. That's why we call it exist. Because it was an exit. It was an exit. We are in an exit. We're not in. You know. We're not in somewhere. It's existence. It's out. Right? So the way to live. Is to remember. That we came out. Right? We came out. Into the world. Someone. Brought us out. We brought ourselves out. However you want to look at it. But it was out. It was an exit. It's existence. Exit. Right? It's X out. So to exist is to is to come out, to come forward, to come out. And the, the funny thing is that once we exist, because we're here now, right? Those of you who are listening, you are here already. We we don't act that way. We in, I'm an introvert. Oh, oh no, I can't do that. No, oh, oh geez. Right? You're in, you're in all the time. That's why I say when you paint, when you create artwork, be out, right? Out. Mess up. You know, mess up the painting, mess it up a thousand times. Watch something great come out of that. You know, mess it up, mess it up. Don't do it right. It's okay. Do it, do it, do it wrong. 
what <laughs> watch the wrong pieces be, be the most the most uh cherished pieces pieces by your collectors some of the pieces that i was like oh my god i really messed up here uh i have collectors fighting for them be like no no it's mine it's mine i love this this is the greatest thing you've ever done and i'm like oh man see there i go listening to my head again <laughs> <laughs> paying attention to the paying attention to the to the idiot <laughs> no no it's not an idiot it's it's is is a tool but you cannot be used by it because then you'll stagnate you got to use it you got to put it to work you got to put it to work and it's an organizational tool as i mentioned before it's just a compass so it's okay it's okay that you mess up it's okay that you're doing things wrong you know, that things don't look right. It's okay that it's not the right moment. It is perfectly fine. It shouldn't be the right moment. There's no such thing that it doesn't exist. It actually doesn't even exist. The only time when it exists is when you pull the trigger. Now, that boom, oh, what happened? There's the right moment. You know, there's the right moment. So so be a cowboy. Be a cowboy. Shoot first and then aim. Don't, 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 don't spend your life aiming. Don't spend your life aiming at something and, and preparing uh just, you know, just do it. Like Nike says, just do it. Uh, again, it's a freaky thing because there's fear, right? But you got to you gotta just jump in, dive in. The water is cold. Yeah, it's cold. I know. Here I go, right? Just dive in. Dive in and, and watch yourself come out a different person. Right? Oh, man, I got to call this person. I got to prepare because this person's blah, blah, blah. Pick up the phone, you know, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone and call. Call the person. Shana says, it's true, sometimes my rough practice uh, work turns out to be my best work. Totally. Totally. It's like Degas said, you know, I'm always, I'm always saying this. Degas said, only when you don't know what you're doing is that you're actually doing something, something great. And, and sometimes you're overthinking something and you dislike it. And then, you know, but it's not true. It's just the mind. The mind just not, the, the, the mind behaves like a little child, you know, uh, not a little little child, more like a like a like an angry teenager. <laughs> it's like it doesn't fit right. It's not goth enough, you know, like an angry teenager. It's not gothic enough. I need it to be goth. <laughs> the, the mind's trying to match. It's trying to match. It's like oh, because it's an organizational tool, right? So so the mind has no understanding of the present moment, right? So so it's the only way to live, but the mind has no idea of it. You know, it's, it's, it's like it's like a blind who can only see to the past and the future, but it cannot it cannot see right now, right? That's the mind. It's is uh, it, I think it's the biggest tragedy in in human existence. It's not a tragedy, but we're learning to 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 understand it as human beings. I I believe there's a few flowers that haven't understood this. You know, there's a few prophets that have understood this. But the rest of us are still like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, my God, what do we do? It's because we're not living the present moment. We're living past and future, constantly living past and future. That's why in, in, in certain places in the Bible, it's called the, the, the narrow gate. Right? The narrow gate. This is one of the, at least my understanding of it, uh, or, the, or the eye of the needle. At least my understanding of it, and when I read passages like that in different sacred texts, is that, is that when you're rich, it doesn't mean that you're rich, that you have a lot of money or belongings or stuff like that. No, you're, you're, you're rich in thought. When you have too much, right? There's too much. You cannot go through that gate. It's very difficult to go through that gate when you have too much, right? That's why the meek, that's why they talk about the meek, the meek entering heaven, right? And I believe that for him, I'm just going to say it. I believe that heaven is that, living in that place, in the present and the, and the, many sacred texts have talked about it. They 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 they, they call it the, the 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 eternal the eternal moment. I remember reading texts about uh, uh, Catholic saints calling it the eternal present, the eternal moment, and 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 it's it's that's the gate to life, you know. But you can't go in it when you have when you're packing all this shit like a mule, you know. You're packing all this. My God, my divorce. My God, my work. Oh, my blah, 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 blah. And you, you're packing all this stuff. You cannot enter it because this can only take care of past and future, but it cannot go through the narrow gate. That's why so many texts call it the narrow gate. It's so narrow. It's so fucking narrow. It's the present. It's, it's so narrow that you cannot go in through the mind. It's so narrow because it's, it's a split of a second. It's this. 
it's this, it's this, it's this. This is the present moment, you know? It's, it's, so it's, there's no way. There's no way for the mind to go through that. The mind's like, what? Which, which moment? Where? Where is it? You know? <laughs> the mind can't do that. But the, the, the being, your being as your core can, right? And that's why when I, when I, when I paint, I can sense that. I, I, don't, I don't live in it, right? I, I'm just, just, just a guy, just going through life. But I know I can sense it when I'm painting. When I'm creating artwork, I'm like, oh shit. I know where I'm at. I'm in that narrow place, right? We call it the zone. We call it the, the, the our athletes call it the zone too. Uh, some people say I, I get lost in it, right? That's another form of saying. Uh, another, I'm, I'm not Christian. I'm not Catholic. I'm not a religious person. But I remember reading this text by, by who was it? St. Paul saying the peace without understanding, Right? That's what it is. You, all of a sudden you have this peace, but you don't know why. It's, it's, it that surpasses all understanding. Why? Because understanding is what? what who understands? This one. <laughs> who understands? This one understands. This is the only one who can understand the mind. Right. That's why it, it's called the peace that surpasses all understanding. It's, it's that narrow gate. And, and so when you're ready to change your life, the only way to do it, I believe, is to start making decisions. Start pulling those triggers. Right. Because it's the only way in. Other, otherwise, you're going to spend your life thinking about what I sh I didn't do and what I could have done, what I didn't do and what I could do, what I what you know shoulda coulda woulda, but it's never it's never boom. Let's do it now, right? It's the only things that change life. I'm sure you didn't sit there and be like, oh my god, should I have a child? Should I not have a child? No, you you had sex one day and you had a child. You know, that's what it took. You, you, know, you, didn't, you didn't sit there and be like, shit, I have a child. Shit. That's why most, most children are like, you were an accident. Almost all children were accidents. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> no one thought about it and be like, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure some couples do that. But no one's like, oh my God, what do you think? What do you think? Should we have a child or what? What do you think? I don't know. Let's talk about this. Let's, uh, let's uh, brainstorm this, right? No. You, you, know, you, you had sex and, and then nine months later, boom, there's a child. Right? That's how it happens. That's life. You, you, you make a decision. You make a decision. Conscious or unconscious, but you make a decision. Right? Hopefully, we start making conscious decisions. But you got to start making decisions. And, and the fear of what's going to happen later. You don't, you don't, you don't have to tell them, God, how am I going to take care of the child? It, it's, it's irrelevant. It's stupid. Right? But we do it because we care. Because we're intelligent. Because we are uh, precise. You know, because we are... We're good people and we want to be good citizens and of the world and, and, and on and on and on and on. And, you know, oh, my God, how am I going to take care of this child? Right. Or how or if I change cities, how am I going to do it? Oh, my God, I can't do it. Oh, what's going to happen? You know, if I move, if I move, what's going to happen? But then, you know, my 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 my, my kids are going to miss their friends. And and I have all, I've made all these relationships at work and and on and on and on. OK, well, stay where you are. You're good. You're good right where you are. See, the thing is that is that life only happens when we make decisions. It's the only place. The only place. So that's why I made this so long, guys, because I, I wanted to I wanted to hammer it in. It's hammer time. Look how stupid this is. Starbucks water. Can you believe that? I still get it though. <laughs> so yeah, guys. Go and go and get it. I don't know. Do your thing. But but uh, make a decision, make a decision, and, and and watch your artwork, watch your 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 thing just start changing. Because what's gonna happen is that you're going to you're going to essentially start uh, living, essentially, right? You're gonna start living. Many of us, many of us exist, but we're not truly living. And and I know I know because the moments that I can savor are very very far, very few. The moments that I can actually savor. Because most of the time I'm in my mind, right? Most of the time I'm in my mind. I'm thinking about, oh my God, this could go wrong. This, What if this goes, you know, oh, oh, oh. so I'm in my mind, right? And not an over-exaggerated, I'm not saying to a point where I can't function. No, but but most human beings, that's that's where we are, right? We're thinking about our, our the, the bills we need to pay and, you know, this and the taxes. And, uh, you know, if you're an artist, you're thinking about a multitude of things too, whatever profession you are. So the only way out of it is to stop thinking. And how do you stop thinking? You start actually making decisions. When decisions are made, the thinking comes down. You make another decision. Why? 
I, I heard this 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 wise man said once. It's because you are becoming, uh, uh, you are committing to life, right? Every time you make a decision, you're becoming highly responsible. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave you there because time is running out for this video, and I gotta get back to work. So thank you so much for joining in. Take care. I will talk to you soon. Adios.